welcome to the very first Let's Talk. Uh, this evening, we're going to be talking about family devotions. Uh, the reasons why we are speaking about family devotions are obvious, I would imagine, uh, in that South Africa at the moment is shut down. South Africa and the world. Uh, I read on the news that there are up to one billion people in their homes at the moment. Uh, and so it seemed like the right time to talk about how to do family devotions, why to do family devotions, and speak with a couple of friends. Uh, and see how other folk are doing it uh, in their homes. The people that I've invited to talk about the subject this evening are Tepo Pitzel from Crystal Park Baptist Church, Tyrell Hogg from Heritage Baptist Church, and Rocky Stevenson from Benoni Bible Church. I'll get each one of you to introduce yourself uh, in a few seconds. Uh, but let me first say, look, all of us that are involved in this are recording from our homes. Uh, most of us have kids. So if you hear the screaming of children in the background, it's just because life happens, <laughs> even in pastors' homes. Um, but let's uh, let's introduce each person we're speaking here today. Rocky, let's start with you, brother. Don't you want to just uh, introduce yourself, uh, introduce your family, and say hi to your church? Sure. Um, it will be difficult to introduce my family. You want me to go and fetch them quickly? No, okay. don't. Um, <laughs> well, I'm from Benoni Bible Church. It's a joy to be on. Thanks, bro. We're about, I think, about four and a half kilometers away from Crystal Park, where Mark and Tsepo are. And it's really a joy to be serving the Lord on the East Rand, near to brothers like them, and um, to really be giving out the gospel in the East Rand. So thanks for having me on. Cool. Great stuff. Uh, Tyrell, you're next. Yeah, Tyrell from uh, Heritage Baptist Church in Melville. I don't know how many kilometers that is from Mark, but I know it's very far. Um, yeah, I've got three kids. Well, but not so uh, far that we can't uh, interact from time to time. We've had pulpit swaps both ways over the years. Yeah, yeah. So, so I've got a five-month-old who's uh, a boy, Joseph. I've got a, another boy, Zachary, who's two, and a girl, Sarah, who's four. And obviously my wife Ainsley, and so that's our little household that's all um, quarantined or isolated or whatever you're calling it together at the moment. Great stuff, Tepo. That made me, that made me look terrible because I didn't introduce my wife Maxine. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> do a better job, wait, Tepo, before you carry on. Rocky, talk about Maxine. <laughs> yeah. So um, also, like Tyrell, have one wife and. Uh, one son though, so um, our life is probably slightly less chaotic than what Tyrell's is, but sometimes I feel like Levi's three in one, um, but he isn't, he's just one, um, you know, very busy two and a half year old. Cool, Tepo. All right, um, yeah, I'm Tepo from Crystal Park Baptist Church, uh, almost hit from Heritage, <laughs> yeah, but from Crystal Park Baptist Church, uh, recently joined staff here, and yeah, I'm, I'm the youngest of the four here on, 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 on this um, uh, talk that we're having. And yeah, um, I'm just married for almost two years now. And so, yeah, no kids yet. And so that, that will be a different perspective coming from me as well. And you are married to Lorato. I don't think that you I'm mentioned that. Let me mention that for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm the husband of one wife. My wife is Diesel. Um, and my kids, Caitlin, Catherine, and Thomas, are 17, 15, and uh, 6. Uh, or in that region. You know, the 16-year-old says she's 17, and it gets complex as they get older. Um, family devotions, guys. That's what we're talking about tonight. Uh, the reason why we're speaking about it is because a lot of folk uh, either who have been engaged in family devotions for a while I uh, might want to hear how other people do family devotions. Um, other folk who haven't done family devotions before now have the most wonderful opportunity uh, to kick off a discipline of grace uh, in their lives over this period of time. Uh, I was wondering, uh, maybe we should just start off by, by talking about this from a biblical perspective. I don't know if uh, one of the three of you would just like to kind of bring up one or two scriptures regarding family devotions. Yeah, sure. you have to pick one so Leviticus you know we've got the uh, the well-known instruction that's given to the people of Israel 
that when they're uh, the way that they ought to instruct their their children is from their rising up, rising up in the morning to their going down while they're walking along the way that all along they should be speaking about the law, um, and we infer from that obviously the whole of God's word. So I think that's quite an important passage to go to. Obviously, one of the others that people like to use is the Proverbs that speaks about raising up a child in the way it will go. Oh, oh, and while that's not exclusive about um, necessarily religious education, but also moral formation, um, it, it definitely, you know, is, those are probably two of the main texts that come to my mind. I don't know what you brothers, what, if there's any others you guys think of. Uh, <laughs> Rocky, you <laughs> shoot. <laughs> yeah, throughout the book of Deuteronomy, you've got the similar type of a theme that is is there all the way along. I mean, if you look at Deuteronomy, in particular, chapter 6 and from verse 20 until verse 25, there was this mm-hmm. instruction for when your son comes to you and asks about what has been done before and the way that it was the parents' responsibility to actually teach their children the way that God had redeemed them from Israel uh, from Egypt and how he'd given them the promised land um, and they were about to go into the promised land after the book of Deuteronomy and um, so they were meant to be giving the instruction to their children and how much more so for Christian parents when we've actually been redeemed from a state of being under wrath and having our sins removed from us and forgiven by the Lord Jesus Christ um, it ought to be every day from the rising to the end of the day in our in our day, teaching our children the way of the Lord. Cool. Tip for final word from your side, Ben. Yeah, so I would have gone to Deuteronomy six, um, which is the great Shema as as known. That's that's basically your whole life. Uh, when you sit with them, when you rise up, and when you walk with them, that's yeah, that's 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 where I would have gone. And and basically, yeah. Um, I, I think I think it's it's just how you live your life, and it just shows how there's no there's no uh, huge of a gap between the father and the children. So there's there's like a close proximity thing that's going on there, which is mm. which is really great to for for learning as well. Yeah, and maybe just to add in, guys, uh, we have Ephesians, um, where it talks about bringing up children and discipline and instruction. And then my favorite go to verse is in 2 Timothy chapter 3, just before that great passage on all scripture being inspired by God. Uh, Paul speaks to Timothy and he says things like, you continue in what you have learned and firmly believed and you know who taught you and how from infancy you have known the sacred scriptures. The, the reality is that even from a very young age, um, scripture was inculcated into the life of Timothy. Tyrell, you look like you wanted to add something, but No, no, no. I was just I was worried that we were gonna leave out the Ephesians verse that you went to, yeah. the discipline and admonition of the Lord. Um, you yeah. know. Do you want to draw out that a little bit? Yeah, I think the I think the two folds of that are important. So when often when we're thinking about parenting, we think about discipline. Um, and and there I'm, I'm kind of narrowing in on the term discipline to to speak about that which shall not be named. Um, but you know what I mean. And then, you know, let's just calm down. The, <laughs> the, the, the other side of that is admonition, which is not only when there are times of discipline, not only when things are wrong, but you can also be admonishing and instructing when things are right. And I think the danger that all of us have our own proclivities, and I think the danger is that you could be doing so much discipline and you could do little admonition, um, sometimes there's people that are doing so much admonition and they're not doing any discipline because they've got a warped view of discipline. But I think it's put there on purpose that there has to be a balance between discipline and admonition with the child. You shouldn't only be speaking about the right way to do things when you're disciplining them. Um, you should also be in the happy times of life, in the good times, in the open spaces, admonishing them. And, and that's kind of what I take away, at least as I think about that passage. Mm. No, that's really useful. So, so guys, I mean, now we've looked at kind of a biblical theology right from the Pentateuch all the way through to New Testament epistles. We see that this idea of children, child rearing, um, and its connection to scripture is there the whole way through. I mean, we could pull out many, many more verses and examples. 
Um, but now let's get really practical. And uh, I think let's go by let's go by order that we're appearing on the screen at the moment. What does devotions and family devotions look like in your home? Temple shoot. Okay. Um, so. I'll start from when I first got married. So, so what it, it's been looking the same to this point. So what we do is we choose a book that we want to go through. And our first five books that we went through was that uh, it was, it's a series by Jonathan Edwards, which talks about um, there's one on beauty, uh, one in heaven and hell. Um, yeah, so it, it's, a, it's a complete series. So we went through that. And it's wow. just... Going, yeah, going through that a chapter or however many pages based on time and just discussing that. So, so one thing that I also do is it's not just me talking, right? Because I believe that I can also learn from my wife. And so just, just to hear what she might have picked up that I didn't pick up so that we can further develop that. And yeah, so sort of barricade where we need to barricade. And yeah, so that we're not just running off to extremes. And so yeah, so that's what we go through. How, how long? How long do you spend in family devotions? I mean, are you spending five minutes reading Jonathan Edwards? Ten minutes? Twenty minutes? Three and a half hours? Make us feel bad. Yeah. So so usually we set out an hour for family devotions, right? So if it's done before the hour is complete, then yeah. But we we do as much as possible because it's just the two of us and we we sort of set out from eight o'clock to about nine o'clock. And then from there, what we do is we'd uh, pray. Uh, we'd look at people that have asked for prayer and we'd also go to our membership list and sort of, um, pray through that and that that actually helps because sometimes you're like oh but who is this and so that that helps us to get to know who the people are in the church and so yeah that 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 calls for an action on our side to get to know who the people are that we fellowshipping with on a sunday man that's excellent thanks temple um tyrell what does family devotions look like in the hog residence yeah so um, you know, it's a weird thing. I, I struggle with the, the idea of, um, of a time of devotion because I think a lot of people will, it's easy for me at least, let me not say a lot of people, it's easy for me to, to think, okay, I've done my time of devotion, whereas really all of life is supposed to be devoted to God and that time is actually meant to, to fire up the rest of what's happening in life. So. Mm different things that I do that organically land somewhere in the day. Um, and sometimes for some seasons of life, they've, they've fit better in the evening and then things have started changing. And I said, Hey, you know what? This is working really well in the morning. So what we do now in the mornings is um, I'll sit around with the kids around the table. And while we're having breakfast, I'll read to them from um, leading little ones to God. It's a really awesome um, kind of devotional book for kids. Lessons in, it's got like a prayer at the end, um, kind of to help guide your prayer around the topic. It's got questions. And so, you know, the two-year-old, he kind of like gets a little bit of it, but not too much. Um, but I want him to get used to seeing dad sitting down with a book and speaking about God. And Sarah mm. interacts a lot more, and then Zach kind of just copies her. But then in the evening, uh, we generally do the catechism. So it's teeth being brushed and then there's like a passageway that's on the way to the bedroom with a chalkboard and we sit down by the chalkboard and we just go over some of our previous catechism questions and whichever one we're learning in this particular week. And then... Uh, which catechism are you guys doing, Taro? Sorry, uh, we're doing the Westminster. Yeah. Um, Westminster Children's Catechism. There's a, a so it's Foster's. It's actually called Foster's Children's Catechism, but it's really it's pretty much the Westminster. And then I just make modernize the language sometimes. And, and just in then, twenty seconds, can you give a definition of what a catechism is, in case anybody's listening and they don't have a clue? Yeah. So a catechism is a, a teaching guide or a teaching manual that uses the Socratic method, which is a question and an answer, a question and an answer to to teach people truth. So it just asks a question and then it gives what the answer would be from scripture. 
and then it just builds on each other, um, kind of heading in a particular direction to cover all the basics of what a Christian ought to know. And that's what disciple or what, what catechisms were originally were discipleship manuals for churches for new Christians. So I'm going through that with them. And then um, we do a lot of kiddie reading time. So I'll read with everybody and I'll make sure that the last book I read is one of the children's Bibles. And so we'll read two or three. I've got a really nice children's Bible that doesn't present pictures of biblical figures as if they're all effeminate. So I really like this one. And, um, and then there's pictures in and, you know, the kids ask questions and they get excited and, and then that's that. And then we all pray together then and go to bed. So it's kind of lots of little devotional aspects scattered mm-hmm. throughout the day. When we get to school, when I drop them off at kindergarten, we pray uh, before mm-hmm. we get out the car. Or when we get out the car and we make a huddle and we pray together and, you know, hands in the middle, team, you know, let's go get it. That, so I don't know, like, there's not one massive time of devotion. There's little things spread out that I see as devotional life. And that's how we've mm-hmm. been working. Great. Rocky, tell us, how does devotion look like in the Stevenson home? Yeah, I'd say very similar to what Tyrell has answered, and it's very much building into the Deuteronomy passage, just thinking through the way that we are to be from the rising in the morning right until going to bed, that God would be very much a part of what we do. And then also wanting to emphasize again that passage in um, Ephesians 6, and I guess from the negative side, and it says there from verse 4, Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger. And that was the command that's given before we see it saying, but bring them up in the discipline and the instruction of the Lord. And so realizing that actually if you're not bringing them up in the discipline and the instruction of the Lord, you're actually building a very angry child. You're building a child that we know James says that the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. We're wanting I think as Christians, we're wanting our children to seek after God and and long after him. Um, We do know that a child must be born again um, to actually receive the Holy Spirit and then to really start understanding the spiritual things of God. But we still do bring a child up, disciplining and instruction with the Lord and emphasizing even what Carl says regarding that discipline. The discipline isn't just the spanks, and I'll mention it so that I'm the one in trouble, but it's the, it's actually even the, the, the time and um, putting order into their life. You know, I think that there's aspects where it's nap time for Levi at 12 o'clock where you can insert God even into nap time and praying with him, asking, um, you know, just telling him that our God is a God of order. You know, when he's packing away his toys, um, you know, inserting scripture into various things. And, and even what I found helpful was Ted Tripp's Shepherd in a Child's Heart, a wonderful series looking at children. And then Martha Pease and a guy with a surname Stuart. Um, and I can't remember the title of the book, but it's, I think it's called The Faithful Parent or, or something to that effect. I could always post that later. That was fantastic, just looking at different age groups of a child. And so I guess with, with Levi at the moment, it is something that's it's difficult to take a um a passage you know from exodus or something and then expound that to levi but it is possible for him to sit in and see mom and dad talking about the scriptures and him realizing that you know there's god's time in our day and that god needs to be respected and so we also do at night time after bath and when he's getting ready for bed we have the routine of sitting with him and we read a, a bible book there's the big picture Bible story. There are times that I do need to correct the theology <laughs> um, as we go, and so I've got a pen and um, and fix that up as we go. And um, so, but it's a joy to be able to do that with him, and for him to realise that God is deserving of our worship and deserving of our time. And um, but then once he's asleep, Maxine and I will generally have time together where we are able to pray and to to spend time in God's word. Something that we do similar to Tsepo, but a bit different is that I would read a book maybe at a different time than Maxine. I generally wake up easier in the morning. They say, you know, you get the early birds and then you get the late night owls or whatever. And then when a mother has small children and they're just a a continuously messed up pigeon or something like that. Um, But 
uh, what what would happen is I would read something like there's a book on orphanology at the moment that we're busy working through, and there's some systematic theology things that we are working through as well. And then we would I would underline, make notes in the book, um, kind of make it a bit colourful, and then Maxine would come and read it later. And so we would do it that way. Sometimes she would be a chapter behind. There's other times where I haven't read it in a little bit and then I'd be a chapter behind and that's very frustrating. So the competitive side comes in and then you need to catch up and read ahead. And so we do spend time in other books, but then we also would spend time in in books of the Bible. The last book that we looked through was the book of Colossians. Actually, sorry, First Peter. Um, and we, we're busy looking a little bit at Colossians at the moment. But at the moment with the church, we're busy doing a family devotional series through the book of, uh, not the book of, but the chapter of Psalm 119. And so really wanting to encourage our families toward, um, you know, using this time wisely in the next 21 days as families and then just studying God's word as best as what they can. So, but it's still one of the things I thought of saying to to husbands that are there, it's still intimidating to do a devotional time with your family, even if you're a pastor. It never becomes easier <laughs> to do even family devotion. I think there's a... In some ways, our, our wives are um, often our biggest critics, aren't they? Uh, and so they're the hardest audience to stand before and uh, open God's words to because they also know our weaknesses more than anyone else. Um, yeah, just and it's in terms of things, the way, uh, sorry, Rocky, did you want to close off? Yeah, no, no, I was just saying it is spiritual. Oops, just knocked over my temporary stand. <laughs> um, I'm just saying that it is work, you know, um, it's spiritual work to, to actually lead your family in devotion. Mm. So uh, the way that the penrys work is uh, we do, do devotions at different times of the day and in different ways during the week. Uh, often when we come home on a Sunday uh, over lunch, we'll have guests. Uh, we spend an hour or so talking about the sermon, uh, application points, what made sense, what didn't make sense, and we analyze that. That's part of our devotional routine. Um, I spend time uh, in the evenings with my son. I put him to bed and pray with him. Uh, he has a really cool uh, comic Bible, which uh, is actually very, very well put together and super masculine, um, like real heroes and like swords and stuff. I, I really enjoy it myself, um, uh, being a comic guy. And so uh, uh, we spend some time going through that in the evenings. Uh, and then whenever we have a chance as a family, straight after supper, so literally, I, I, I normally eat a little bit quicker than everybody else in the family. Um, I'll, uh, I'll finish my food. And uh, if there's time, there's no Bible studies that evening or appointments that evening. Um, I then take the, the Bible and I, I just read a chapter. So we're currently working through the book of John, but we've read through, we've read through a number of books in the Bible. We go a chapter at a time uh, through the Bible, and I just read it. And I get to the end, and if there is time, we'll go around the room and we will ask if you have a point of application that you can make or an observation that you want to make or a question that you want to ask. And so Thomas will almost always observe that Jesus died for our sins, but he's like six and seven and he's grappling with that at that stage. Uh, the 17 year old will always try and trap me with some kind of theological profundity. Um, and Liesl will always have a very poignant point of application that comes out of the text. Um, and uh, that mechanism actually I saw on display. I, 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 was, I stayed with, uh, with uh, Conrad in Zambia uh, for a while with him and his wife, uh, Philistus, and, uh, and I just observed that that's what they did for their family devotions. They just read a passage of scripture, I got to the end and said, is there anything that you want to observe? Is there anything that you want to apply? Uh, is there any question that you want to ask? Um, it was a really simplified form of family devotion. Um, and and you, can, you can kind of regulate how long it takes because you don't have to read a whole chapter. Uh, sometimes we will read a paragraph, particularly if it's a, a, a theologically rich paragraph. Uh, other times when there's, when there's more time and we can have more discussion, uh, we'll go a bit longer. You know, guys, we're coming to the end of the time that's allotted for this. Um, and uh, I am keen to hear if you have any closing thoughts uh, in terms of how people over this next 21 days might use their time wisely. 
and uh, you've got about a minute or so, and we'll go in reverse order to what we did at the moment. So, Rocky, we'll start with you, and then Tyrell, and then uh, Tepo. Yeah, Mark, I think that there are really good resources out there. <coughs> I hope I can give you guys Corona now. <laughs> yeah, it's like wear a mask or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's some really good resources out there that are helpful. I'm sure, you know, if, if you're a member of Crystal Park or Heritage or even um, Benoni, if you've got various questions, you could even message your pastors and ask them or your elders and ask them if there's a question that you have from a text. But um, if you've got a good study Bible, like the Reformation Study Bible or the MacArthur Study Bible or the ESV Study Bible, it's helpful to even read some of the introductory notes to a book as a, as a husband before leading your family in a devotional time. You could even read some of the commentary aspects. You don't want to be overly dependent on that. Um, and then I think it, it's a good thing to open in a word of prayer, recognizing that it's God who... Um, makes it possible for us to understand his word. And I like what you said regarding Conrad's way um, and what you've adopted as a family, because God's word can be simply read. Um, and I think we do need to get out of the mindset that only pastors or elders can understand God's word or that only um, you know, there's certain people that can only understand it if they've studied it. We have the priesthood of all believers when we have the Holy Spirit within our, our hearts. And, um, and we're able to come and understand his word and apply it. So that would be what I'd say is that you don't need to overcomplicate it and you can um, depend upon the Holy Spirit to help. And it's also okay um, for the men that are listening to this. It's okay for you to say, I don't know. And I'll go find out. You know, the Lord has put others in your life that you can call and that you can get a hold of. Even if you, during your, your time, maybe... Um, you could even send a WhatsApp or something to one of the brothers in the church that you, you think might have a, an answer to that. We do have our Christianity not alone in a fishbowl, but we, we are part of a community of believers. And so I'd say reach out um, when, when you are battling in it, but then take the bravery to, to do it. And I guess one other tip, and, and then I'll end with that, is turn the TV off. We're definitely ending with that because that's the longest minute in recorded history. Carry on, finish. <laughs> Yeah, turn turn the TV off, you know, I think there's many distractions and you really can use this time wisely in the next 21 days. You can have a bit of a reboot of your family devotion time. And I think the tip of at the, at the dinner table is really helpful. You know, just when you're done with dinner, take the Bible out and put the plates all in the middle or whatever and just read God's word and, and pray. Brilliant. Thanks, Rocky. Tyrell? Yeah, you, um, I think, there's not much more we can say. Um, actually, you can't say any more, right? It looks like Please. Zoom has given us a couple of extra minutes. So let's use the time that they've gifted to us. Okay. So, it, it, you know, the thing is try and hook your devotional time, if you have one, onto an event rather than onto a time. That helps. I think that's why I'm not at 6 o'clock, but with dinner or with breakfast or something. Um, I can't really add on to, there's so much good stuff that you've heard already, but maybe you don't have kids. It's really actually awkward, I find, to have a devotion with my wife, but what really worked for us when we got married was we used the New City Catechism app. And the New City Catechism app's really cool because it's got a video by a really well-respected teacher. It's got a commentary. It's got a historical prayer. It's got a scripture reading. And so you can kind of share, I'll read this. Hey, will you read that? And then you can say, do you have any questions and have a discussion and then that leads into your time of prayer. So, you know, if you've made it this far and you're single or you're a new couple without children, New City Catechism is a, a really helpful aid I found when, when I first got married to just doing something with my wife. Yeah, that's brilliant, Tyrell. Thank you so much. Tepo? Yeah. Um, yeah, so, so I also got married and I didn't know what it looked like. And so I was like, okay, it needs to look like something. And so my guide was basically from the Deuteronomy text again. But I don't have kids. <laughs> so what does it look like in, in my setting with just me and my wife? So it was, it was good that um, we would set a time aside because we both had work during the day. And so the time that we get together, which is at night, um, then we do that. Sometimes we did it in the morning, but it didn't work so, so well. So that's why we switched to the night. Um, so, yeah, so I think just choose that, choose material that you both would like to learn from. 
and that would that would be beneficial. And again, I think this is something that we need to mention. Um, family devotions don't necessarily have to replace your personal devotions. So we we need to be reading the Bible on our own um, and studying whatever we're doing on our own and coming to family time. That's something added on to that. Yeah. Mm. Excellent. Well, look, to close, um, I do trust that you will be in prayer over this time of this next 21 days. Uh, and I would like to ask you to pray, particularly for first responders, for nursing staff, uh, and for other critical services. Uh, we have them in all of our churches, uh, folk that are on the front lines of fighting against uh, sickness and against the, uh, the depravity of this world and the difficulties of this world. And um, also be in prayer for those who are vulnerable at this time, who are maybe by themselves uh, or who are struggling. Um, and now would be the time to phone a friend, to phone someone in your family, uh, and to share your faith and your hope and your trust that you have in Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. Um, I'm hoping that tomorrow night we will be talking about personal evangelism and how to do that uh, in a corona-infested world. Um, so I'm looking forward to having a couple more invited guests. And Tyrell, Rocky, Tepo, I'm hoping that you guys join us again uh, sometime soon as we have these conversations over the next 21 days. God bless you all. Thanks, Mark. Thanks.